Every one of us have heard the story of Mowgli before, or at least we've seen the movie. It's a very famous story, the kid who's been raised by animals in the jungle. But did we ever think that this story could be real? Rudyard Kipling's novel The Jungle Book tells the story of Mowgli, a boy who was abandoned by his parents and raised by wolves. While he was taught the ways of the animal kingdom, he never learned how to interact with another human being. The writer of the story was inspired by a real story that occurred in India. Dina Sanachar was raised by wolves in India's Uttar Pradesh jungle until hunters found him in 1867 and brought him to an orphanage. He would later serve as Rudyard Kipling's inspiration for the character Mowgli. A lot of people would say that a story like that wouldn't occur in our time with all methods of communication that we have today. We don't have to be afraid of losing a kid to the jungle or to the animals. But that's not correct at all. In some places of the world, people still live far away from our today's civilization. When the estimates of uncontacted peoples are taken together and compared, about 100 tribes worldwide is a reasonable answer to give, though the real number is likely higher. Sources for these numbers include observations from aircraft flying over the isolated regions and accounts by contacted peoples living nearby. Our story happened in one of those places, in South Africa. The story of African Mowgli, or that's the local media called him when the story went viral, his actual name's John. He was lost when he was just a baby in the jungle. He was a baby of a local tribe living near the jungle. His mother lost him while she was taking a shower in the river. She got back and found that her baby's gone. She tried to look for him, but she couldn't find him. The whole tribe was looking for the missing baby for days, but they never found him. The tribe was convinced that the baby was eaten by an animal. They never knew that this baby was still living in the jungle with the animals. When his mother was bathing in the river, the baby followed a beautiful little insect that was walking on the grass. He kept following the insect until he lost his way back to the river. The baby got scared he couldn't find his mother, so he started to cry, but she was very far away and couldn't hear him by that time. A few months after the incident, the baby was found by an Australian couple who was doing investigations on the monkeys in that part of the jungle. They were very surprised when they found a human baby among the little monkey babies. The baby looked like a monkey for the first time, but when they approached him, they realized that he was actually a human baby. The couple, Susie and Smith, took the baby with them and ran to the hospital to check up on him. The doctors told them that the baby was lucky because he was big enough to feed on fruits that the monkey mother brought to her kids. Susie and Smith knew the Mowgli story, but like every one of us, they never thought that it could come true. One of the doctors in the hospital was originally from a local tribe. He explained to the couple that some of the local tribes lived near enough to the jungles to lose their baby like that. He explained to them that sometimes the animals eat the babies. He told them that most likely the family of that baby is convinced that the baby's eaten by some animal and there's no way to find them because they aren't communicating with the modern world. The couple felt so bad for the poor baby they decided to adopt him. They took him back with them to Australia and treated him like their own son. They gave him the name John. He was a spoiled kid because Susie and Smith loved him so much and they felt so blessed to have him in their life. John also felt thankful to the couple that saved him, adopted him, and provided him with a good life. John's a very smart kid, but he didn't have a lot of friends because he was bullied in school by other kids. John didn't look like everyone else in the school. He wasn't a beautiful kid, and that's why they used to be mean to him. John hated going to school because of that, but his family was always supporting him, and that helped him move on. When John was in high school, he was in the top of his class, and he was famous as the smartest kid in the school. But that didn't help him get new friends. One day, a girl called Sarah tried to talk to him in the school. That was his first time talking to a girl, and he didn't know what to say. Sarah was having a problem studying math, and she needed some help from him. She took his number and told him that she'd call him to set up a meeting. John got back to his house happy that day. His parents realized why he was happy when he told them that he might get a guest this night, a friend coming to study with him. Susie and Smith understood that their son felt lonely, but they couldn't do anything to help him. That night, they were very happy for him. By visiting him and his family, Sarah realized that John wasn't so different from her, her family, or anyone else. He just never had the chance to introduce himself to the community like everyone else. After that day, Sarah and John became very close friends, and they were going together every weekend. Sarah used to visit John at his house because she loved to stay with Susie and Smith, who were always telling stories about their trips in Africa back in the days. 
Sarah was having fun staying around John and his family, and she started to learn how good of a person he was. Without even noticing it, Sarah fell in love with John. One day, when Sarah and John were studying in his room, she told him that she loved him. John took a moment to process what he had just heard before he replied, I love you too. John told Sarah that he was in love with her, but he couldn't tell her that because he was afraid of scaring her away, especially when she was only his friend. Sarah and John had a perfect relationship, and they were having fun together. But when Sarah told her friends in the school that she was in love with John, they started to make fun of her and bullying her even more than they had bullied him. Sarah couldn't take it, and she was so bothered about what she was hearing every day in the school, she finally decided to end her relationship with John. However, she was still in love with him. John was heartbroken when Sarah called him to tell him that she wanted to break up with him, not only as her boyfriend, but even as a friend. She told him that she didn't want to know him or see him again. So he graduated from school in the top of his class, and that way he could be easily accepted in any college he wanted. John decided not to continue studying and started looking for a job. Finding a job wasn't easy for John because the community didn't accept him. John was so sad, but he never gave up. He started working as a writer. As a young kid, he heard a lot of stories about jungles from his parents, and he started to make comic books based on those stories. John was very good at his job, and he became a famous writer. A lot of publishers wanted to work with him. For the first time, John was making new friends, real friends who didn't care about how he looked, but they cared about his ideas and his visions. John became very rich writing comic books, but that wasn't enough for him. He started writing long novels as well, as he was a good writer. One day, he got this crazy idea to write a novel about his own story, how his parents found him in the jungle, how the animal accepted him in their community, and the people didn't. John wrote the story and published it. The story went viral, and everyone was talking about the African Mowgli, who now lives in Australia. Everyone bought the book, which made John very famous and a rich man. On the other hand, at the time, after 10 years of graduating from high school, Sarah was working in a bookstore. Unlike John, her life didn't go well after high school. She couldn't get accepted in college, and she couldn't hold a job for more than a few months. In her bookstore, everyone was asking about John's new book. She knew that this writer must be so talented, but she wasn't interested in reading the book or even reading about the writer. She was just doing her job. One day, the owner of the bookstore told her that they would host a little party for one of the most famous writers in the country. He also explained that the guy's a millionaire and she should take care of the details. That night, the famous writer entered the room and Sarah was shocked. The famous millionaire writer that everyone was talking about was John, the guy who she refused when she was a teenager. She can't get close to him now, there were people everywhere around him asking him for a photograph or a signature. In that room, no one knew anything about Sarah's story or the other bully kids in the school, but everyone knew John's story, and they loved it. All right, friends, that's the end of this incredible story. We hope, as always, that it's been to your liking. If you liked it, give us a like. Leave us your valuable comment, share on your social networks, subscribe to our channel, and activate that notification bell so that you're always notified when we have a new video, and that way you don't miss any of our stories. For now, we only have to invite you to join us in the next one.